Good evening and welcome to worship this evening with us, those of you who are with us and as well as those online. Um, the few announcements that I have for today are uh, our annual meeting is coming up on January 26th. It's at 7.30 p.m. here um, following worship um, that evening. The other announcement that we have to share is that our um, Sunday school and Wednesday school programming will um, continue to be in a virtual format through January. We will um, be back in person, hopefully, on January 23rd and January 26th. If anybody has any questions about um, faith formation programming, you can let me know um, or reach out to Lindsay as well. Those are the announcements I have, so we will continue our worship service in song. I also announce yes. um, the budgetary discussion meetings, the yes. information meetings about the budget that will be approved at the annual meeting will be held the Wednesday and Sunday before the annual meeting. So the Wednesday before the annual meeting would be the 19th. They will be at 7.30 following worship. And the uh, one on Sunday is the 23rd, I believe, at 9.30 till 10.25. That one has a hard stop time just because we don't want to be holding meetings during worship time. So uh, the Sunday budget information meeting will be done by 1025. But those are the two times you can come and uh, learn about the, the budget and ask all the questions you want. Thank you. Thank you. We will continue um, with song. Those of you who are with us can stand as you are able. <laughs> continue with our confession. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who sends the word with angels, who is made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace on all the earth. Amen. In Christ, we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the meek. We are quick to anger but slow to forgive. We have not put on love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace that all we do in word or deed may reflect your love born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary. Your sins are forgiven and you are clothed in peace. Amen. Please pray with me. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading comes from the book of Sirach, the 24th chapter. Wisdom praises herself and tells of her glory in the midst of her people. In the assembly of the Most High, she opens her mouth, and in the presence of his hosts, he tells of her glory. I came forth from the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth like a mist. I dwelt in the highest heavens, and my throne was in a pillar of cloud. Alone I compassed the vault of heaven and traversed the depths of the abyss. Over waves of the sea, over all the earth, and over every people and nation, I have held sway. Among all those, I sought a resting place. In whose territory should I abide? Then the creator of all things gave me a command, and my creator chose the place for my tent. He said, make your dwelling in Jacob, and in Israel receive your inheritance. Before the ages, in the beginning, he created me, and for all the ages I shall not cease to be. In the holy tent I ministered before him, and so I was established in Zion. Thus, in the beloved city he gave me a resting place, and in Jerusalem was my domain. I took root in an honored people, in the portion of the Lord, his heritage. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the book of Ephesians. Chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the high, heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, 
having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. The gospel reading for today is from the gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have, received, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, the author, Jesus, the word, and the wisdom who guides our way. Amen. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, it is the 12th day of Christmas today, so we can still say Merry Christmas. Um, and we still have just a few more um, not a few more, a few more hours, I guess, until Epiphany. So Epiphany is tomorrow. Until then, I will say Merry Christmas. Okay, so our readings for this week take us back to the beginning. Not the beginning of the story of Jesus' birth, but rather to the foundations of the earth and the creation of all things. The Gospel of John tells us that the Word has existed since the beginning, this word we have come to know as Jesus Christ. You may have noticed that our first reading for today did not come from the Bible in the pews. However, you might recognize the book if you grew up in the Roman Catholic tradition or have done extensive Bible study. The book of Sirach is found in a third portion of the Bible that's not traditionally found in our Bible that we use in the ELCA. Like the book of Proverbs, Sirach is a book of Jewish ethical teachings, and in this reading for this week, we hear from the perspective of wisdom. Wisdom is personified as one who was with God at the creation of all things and who covers the whole earth. She offers human beings sound advice for negotiating their lives, and what makes her counsel so authoritative is the fact that it emanates from the very source of life. At the beginning of a new year, we might all be tempted to create 
resolutions about our lives, only quick to abandon them in the next week or two, favoring the ease of what we knew before. Wisdom might not give us a life plan, but this passage does give us a couple of characteristics that we could maybe live by. The first is that wisdom is found in community. Wisdom is not a trinket that's hidden high on a shelf. She says, my creator chose the place for my tent. He said, make your dwelling in Jacob. Thus, in the beloved city, he gave me a resting place, and in Jerusalem was my domain. I took root in an honored people. Even though this wisdom is everywhere, from the highest vault of heaven to the deepest depths of the earth, she desires a place to settle down, a place to rest, a place to call her home. In our world, community might mean a lot of different things. We might talk about our community as being Cassin Manorville or Southeast Minnesota. We might talk about our community as being part of the Midwest of the United States, or we might talk about our community as global citizens. But regardless of our definition of community, it really means a space to be in relationship with other people. In our world right now, we continue to kindle relationships in a variety of ways. In real life, we might get together in person with friends or family. And in our digital lives, we might get together and visit with people who are too far away to see face to face. We now know that in this digital world, we have multiple ways of communicating with one another. And yet, for all of our advances in technology, there are still some things, some messages that are best delivered in person. The proposal of marriage, the birth of a child, the news of a loved one's death. In such cases, delivering the message in person makes an enormous difference. Not only can we say the words face to face, but we can also give and receive tangible expressions of love and compassion. The pandemic of COVID-19 has brought home to many of us just how important physical presence is. For the sake of our own health and that of others, we have had to communicate by electronic means with family and friends. Perhaps the most heartbreaking reality of this pandemic is that so many families have had to say goodbye to loved ones from the screen of a telephone or a tablet, and that so many have died without a loved one by their side. The God who created and loves this world understands that need and longing for physical presence. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. God has always been present with God's people and has always spoken to God's people through human voices, such as those of the prophets. But in Jesus, God decided to come closer, to deliver the word in person, the person of God's Son. This word made flesh brings us a message that would be hard for us to understand otherwise. Martin Luther expresses this truth um, in one of his Christmas sermons. He says that reflection on the divinity and majesty of God might terrify us. That is why Christ took on humanity. That this humanity that should not terrify us, but rather that in, with love and favor, he should console us. For what could be less intimidating or more comforting than a baby? Luther writes this. See how God invites you in many ways. He places before you a babe with whom you take refuge. You cannot fear him, for nothing is more appealing to a person than a babe. Are you afraid? Then come to him lying in the lap of the fairest and sweetest maid. You will see how great is the divine goodness, which seeks above all else that you should not despair. Trust him. 
here is the child in whom is salvation. To me, there is no greater consolation given to humankind than this, that Christ became human, a child, a babe, playing in the lap of his most gracious mother. Who is there whom this sight would not comfort? Now is overcome the power of sin and death and hell and conscience and guilt. If you come see this gurgling babe and believe that he has come, not to judge you, but to save. Of course, the baby in the manger is only the beginning of God's message to us in this word made flesh. But in this baby, we begin to see and understand the very heart of God. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. In the Word made flesh, we see a heart so full of love for us that it will go to any length to reach us. It will stop at nothing to make us God's own. Not even the frailty of human flesh nor the darkness of suffering and death can keep God from us, nor us from God. For the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Another characteristic of wisdom from Sirach that we learn from is how she occupies herself with serving God. Not only does wisdom come from God, but also leans into a life that reflects God to others. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he begins with this blessing, a blessing to the people of Ephesus. Like wisdom, in Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set out hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. The Gospel of John tells us this as well. To all who believe in his name, he gave power to become children of God. We have been adopted as children of God, and alongside Christ, we serve God. How we serve God in this new year and throughout our lives looks different for each of us. As the body of Christ, we have different gifts and talents to use as we work alongside one another for the glory of God. Like wisdom, we are called to live in community with one another and to serve those around us, especially those we don't see in this place. We are called not to better ourselves or to be better Christians. We are called to be Christ in this world. For this work and throughout the year, I will leave you with a blessing um, it comes from a book called Ordinary Blessings by Meta Hera Herrick Carlson. It's called For the New Year. Before resolutions, reflection. Last year merits a moment for setting free both grief and gratitude for what has been and that things within and beyond our control. Remembering grants time to ask, am I running away from what was or toward what might still be? Perhaps this year's resolve is to heal who I already am. My person does not need fixing or replacing so much as mending and gentle attention. This requires deeper promises, a sacred acceptance of the one who deserves so much more than this annual beat down this withholding of grace and tenderness. Begin by reacquainting yourself and confessing the fear of being truly known. That is resolution enough today and every day. Amen.
of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our offering. We have an opportunity to share.
us to receive the grace and truth you offer at this table and renew in us the song of your salvation in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to God our Father. And so with the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks again and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look for hope. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pray with me the Lord's Prayer, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's manger, at Christ's table, come. See what God makes known for you. You are welcome to partake. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us, in these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly hosts and the Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You make yourself known in the gift of language in diverse forms. Draw our attention to those who communicate through sign, braille, and technology. Make your church a place where all methods of communication are celebrated. Merciful God, 
creating God, the sun greets us anew each morning. Thank you for waking us up today to witness and share your abundance. Awaken us always to your wisdom. <coughs> Excuse me. And deepen our care for your natural world. Merciful God. Emmanuel, in your name we are assured that you are with us. Train nations and peoples to honor and respect one another, especially those whose names and identities have been mistreated, neglected, or oppressed. Merciful God, you adopt us as your beloved ones. Accompany parents and children navigating the adoption process, especially those in the foster system. Sustain those struggling with infertility or pregnancy loss. Tenderly embrace all in need. Merciful God, you journey with us through change. Guide those assuming new roles in this congregation or making transitions in their families, workplaces, or communities. As the seasons and the calendar change, equip us for unexpected challenges. Merciful God, we give you thanks for all who model lives of loving service. Lead us in your grace until with all your saints we enter the fullness of your glory. Merciful God, rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The announcements have already been covered, so I will add the blessing. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. You are welcome to stand and sing if you like.
God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. God rest ye merry gentlemen, God rest ye merry gentlemen, God rest ye merry gentlemen. Go in peace, rejoiced in Christ our Savior. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God.